I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done, and I promised I would help you however I could. I'm certain a cure for you can be found at Moonrise Towers, but it's complicated. The journey specifically, it's extremely perilous. Though it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. Finally, we're catching up on our puppet master. And the hunt ends at Moonrise Tower. To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, tormented, dangerous souls. So it seems, though I don't know how. You will have to choose your approach carefully. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna. It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorne built a secret stronghold deep down there, before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias, Shah worshippers. Dark Justicias? I must see for myself. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. From this stronghold, Ketherick's forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. If you can find this place, I'll wager it will reveal a more direct path to Moonrise Towers. And maybe even bypass the worst of the Shadow Curse. You'll need to pick it up where Aradin left off. Find the hidden entrance. It's somewhere in the Temple of Saluna. One of the adventurers had a clue to help find it, a dwarf called Brian. It might still be found on his corpse, wherever the goblins left it. The decision is yours, but I'd favor the Underdark. Even a place like that is the lesser evil compared to the Shadow-Cursed Lands. You may reconsider once you see the effects of the curse for yourself. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. It seems our fates have aligned. I've chosen a successor as First Druid, Francesca of the High Forest. A bird's already been dispatched to summon her. I'm glad you approve. I do not truly care if you approve, but I am glad. The Grove needs to move beyond the mistakes of the past. What it needs is an unknown quantity. An outsider who can enforce the Oak Father's teachings without bias. This is why I chose Francesca. She will restore simplicity and purity to the Grove in my absence. Indeed. We've quite the journey ahead of us. Oak Father's blessings to you. It's had the whole region around Moonrise Towers in a chokehold of darkness and despair for years now. Those who remained are shadow cursed. If you don't die at their hands, then you become one of them. We have to get to Moonrise. But the less time we spend in its blighted surrounds, the better.
There are few things that are too strong for me. And cast those regrets aside. You did not get caught up in the moment. You seized it. In other circumstances, I would have done the same. A bad impression. <laughs> Impossible. I studied one up close. Closer than most would care to be to those things. A drow attacked me and I defended myself. Afterwards, I was able to examine the tadpole that emerged. Hideous, but fascinating. Like nothing else in nature, I'm glad to say. Precious little. But I'm quite certain it can still be found. Aradim was convinced there was a hidden entrance in the Temple of Saluna. I'd start there. Those illithid creatures threaten the natural order. It's my duty to do what I can to stop them. There's also the Shadow Curse. It's an affront and must be cleansed. I helped overthrow Ketherick Thormund his dark justicias years ago. But I failed to prevent him from unleashing darkness across the region before he was defeated. If I can join you and get close to Moonrise, perhaps I can lift this curse just as you find a cure for your infection. Well, there's hardly anyone left to share the responsibility with. Few who witnessed the fall of Moonrise still draw breath. What Ketherick Thorm unleashed is not something that nature can undo by itself. I must do what I can. I studied the Shadow Curse for years, but to truly understand it and stop it, I must reach its source. Precisely. Then perhaps I could have done something about both the Shadow Curse and Ceramorphosis aberrations. But in my eagerness, I put far too much faith in the abilities of Aradin and his band. We didn't even get close. Perhaps. But we'll need to get closer before I can put my theory into practice. Put it from your mind for now. Once we near the curse, then there will be more to be said. With such stimulating company? <laughs> Never better. With such stimulating comp. Do we get out of here? <coughs> the smoke. I can't see a damn thing. <coughs> right. I'll try to keep up. Miri. No. Gods, no, no, no. You should have stayed. You should have been with me. I was in our room. We had a fight. If I just kept my mouth shut about that bloody dowry, she'd still... She'd still be here. I'm sorry, Mary. I'm so sorry. Please, just go. I need a moment with her. All's well, I hope. No. I just wanted to see how you felt after the night we spent together. When we talked and kissed. I hope so too. Though I'm not sure what kind of courtship will be afforded, given all that we're facing. But if you want to see where this goes, 
I do as well. I was. He mentioned Dark Justicias, and we've come across other signs of a Sharon presence during our travels. I'm not sure I can dismiss that as a coincidence. Very serious of you, but go ahead. Even if I could remember, I'm not sure I'd tell you. I don't want your ego to get overinflated. Drop your weapons! I'll feed your innards to the ants before I do that, Istik. This is your last chance! No, look up. That was your last chance, Istik. Now burn! Wasting time, Beretta. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to. No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. I hate to be negative, but those gifts will carve you up like a goose. What easy prey you make. Walking right within my blade's embrace. These creatures are so simple to ensnare, Beretha. You mule too much about your task. Forgiveness, Kithrak. And as for you, tell me, why shouldn't I run you through this instant? Of course you are not a... We are you feel her mind. Help us. Don't help them. Don't tell them a thing. We're dead if you do. Do not speak your... He begins to move his hand in a quick flurry of gestures. Realize he's casting detect thoughts. <laughs> Nothing even approaching a useful thought in that skull. I ought to just kill you. My blade is my right. If I can take your life, it is mine. But perhaps you have other uses. Very well, Istik. Seek out survivors from the ship that crashed on this wretched world. Bring me their heads. Bring me the weapon. If you succeed, the reward will be great. Now go! Well, you've been naughty, and you know what happens when you're naughty. Gods damn it. Anyone but her. Now? But I'm just getting comfy. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. 
My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora. And at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. Don't you worry. That ship has long sailed the sticks. But a defiant pup must still pay his price. To wit. Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. have you done a promise broken a price paid you know the terms get used to the new form pet there's no going back some magic even I can't undo now let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade Karlak keep an eye on him would you I'll be keeping mine on you oh and will don't forget our pact still stands ta-ta i'll be honest soldier i'm reeling will hardly knows me but he chose my life over his <sighs> been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that You can say that again. When he was chasing me through Avernus, I thought he was just another sad merc. How wrong I was. That contraption's a hot ticket item. Might not be our last scrap for its sake. Let's hope Damon is as good as he seems. Once my engine's handled, I can focus on more important matters. Tadpoles. Cults, frosty pints. We were both part of Zariel's inner circle. Her by choice, me by force. In the grand scheme of things, I'm inconsequential to Zariel. Sure, I've got the engine, but I wasn't even her strongest fighter. She favoured me like a child favours a captive pet. Mizora envied the attention, I suppose. I'm sure when Zariel gave her the order to hunt me down, Mizora was delighted. I don't know. You'd think she'd have more important things to do. Devils and their pride. No kidding. The fighting, the chaos, the betrayal. <laughs> it had the makings of a good stage show, but I did not want to be one of the players. <laughs> Funny you should ask. I was just thinking about what would have become of us without that Nautiloid. I mean, I know where I'd be. Trapped in Avernus still, with the Blade of Frontiers on my tail. But what about you?
I can picture you getting mixed up in some outrageous shit. Giants, beholders, <laughs> Thayans, the works. Maybe once we've wrapped up the current shenanigans, we'll rest a bit and find some new heap of troubles to throw ourselves at. Gods damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. Warlock pets tend to be unforgiving from what you know of them. Will was lucky he didn't face a more severe punishment. I deserve that. Consider me properly shamed. It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast Eldritch Blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds, but I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. A possibility that's kept me awake countless nights. But I don't have a clue where to start, other than play her games and play by the rules. That's the only language devils listen to. It could well be. She has the blighted thing. What I know of it is simply what has engraved itself upon my memory. My contract is very clear. I can bring Mazora no harm. She'll have to let me out of my pact willingly. The only way out is if I can out-bargain her. We're standing here with nothing but the clothes on our backs and the worms in our heads. I'm so sorry to give you another reason to sleep restlessly, but it's my burden to bear. She won't touch you unless there's something there for her to take. Don't give her so much as an inkling there might be. Even in such fraught times as these, there's peace to be found in the stillness as evening draws in. I used to while away many hours just like these with my companion. I'm in far comfier surrounds. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. Fire, Geron's lost nose. No! I speak of Tara, my Tressim, assistant, my constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. Should be proud to see me keeping such fine company. The savior of those poor tieflings, no less. And I've given her precious little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition, I locked myself in my tower for an entire year. Inconsolable, wallowing in my self inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself, but Tara never did. It was her encouragement, her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. She has a good heart. You should recognize the same in your actions here. I'm sure she'd approve of me lending myself to your efforts. Smart does her a disservice. She's a fine wizard in her own right, though somewhat held back by her lack of opposable thumbs. You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you, an unwavering tenacity, even in the face of, to be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home. Besides, she was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging on to Mistress' coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. <laughs> Very funny. But as we all know, nymphs are sticklers when it comes to their bathing routines. You, my friend, haven't been near a fresh spring in a ten-day or more. Not that I don't appreciate your... 
Musk? Actually, rather like it. Well, this seems as good a time as any for me to stop babbling on. Hmm. Were I to recite that list, I fear we'd be here at dusk tomorrow. Many things, I assure you. But a conversation better saved for another time. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue... excitement may tip it over the edge. So to speak. Go. Enjoy your evening. Nothing better for the heart than a good night's rest. And mine is gladdened to know I'll have the pleasure of your company again come morning. Githyanki patrolling these wilds is an unexpected surprise. Whatever they seek, they'll not hesitate to kill us if we stand in their way. That is most gratifying to hear. May I? Thank you. It is a strange experience. Each time anew, I kind of lost soul is spelunking through the darkness that is me, only to be sacrificed on the dread altar of the heart. But doesn't feel quite right. I mean, it never feels right, but it relieves. This doesn't relieve. Oh. Mm. You do plenty for me, more than you realize. But this cannot be remedied. <clears throat> the magic isn't having the effect it should have. It's not like the last time, like a rainstorm that quells a forest fire it merely drizzles the embers still sizzle the fire remains undefeated i'm not certain what's going on but nothing good please i need to think i need to retrace my steps to a glade of calm and think thank you for the artifact a great deal of trouble it was too a great deal of trouble indeed if Yankee are keen to reclaim the artifact I carry, I can't afford that to happen. In fact, none of us can. That thing is shielding us somehow. I don't want to know what happens if we lose it. I only know what I know. I was ordered to retrieve it, and that's what I intend to do. The rest is immaterial to me. Very serious of you. But go ahead. Always good when I'm with you. Promised I'd be back. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. I see you've been using the powers the tadpole gives you. Good. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Holton might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. Yes. 
Hulsin is correct. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Hulsin knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites were merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. I have kept a careful watch on the movements of the cult. Though the absolute aims are not yet clear to me, its methods are. These parasites are more than illithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the true souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be mind flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. Because I am just like you, and I need an ally. Just like you, I was infected with a mind flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. No, I can handle this. For now. The power I used to protect you, I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. Another visit from the Golden Paladin. It said we'll get the answers we need about the tadpole if we infiltrate the cult. It's a fair point. I just don't want to take a short-term boom. I want to win this whole thing. To finish off the cult. To get this tadpole out. To stay sane the whole time. I had another dream. Which, I suppose, means you did as well. Whoever's reaching out to us truly does seem opposed to the Absolute, but wants us to embrace the Tadpole. Venture right into the heart of the cult. Perhaps we truly have a secret protector. Or we're walking into a trap. Very serious of you. But go ahead. I had another visit from that dream figure. I take it you did too. It claims that if we infiltrate the heart of the cult that's giving out these parasites, we'll find the answers we're looking for. It gave me another gift too. Just like it did the first time it appeared. Rather generous, if you ask me. And if that fails, then there's always killing them quietly. Now, was there anything else? You don't sleep well.
flitting between dreams and nightmares. Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong. Or maybe you just get lucky. Shit. No, no. It's not what it looks like. I swear. I... I wasn't going to hurt you. I... I just needed... Well... Blood. There, in the dim firelight, you see him for what he really is. A vampire. A slave to sanguine hunger. I've never killed anyone. Well, not for food. I feed on animals. Bulls. Deer. Kobolds. Whatever I can get. But it's not enough. Not if I have to fight. I feel so... weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. A strange sensation courses through you, and your companion's mind unfolds, secrets half revealed. I... What's this? What's happening? Your mind lurches, reeling suddenly as if bitten. His mind opens up, revealing cracked and quivering memories. At their heart, you see dark eyes commanding you to feed. You open your mouth and bite down, not into a tender neck, but into the twisting body of a rat, the only thing your master lets you eat. I... Yes. Yes, I ate whatever disgusting vermin my master picked. So you can see why I'm slow to trust you. But I do trust you. And you can trust me. Because we don't have a choice. Not if we're going to save ourselves from these... Worms. I need you alive. You need me strong. Please, only be a taste, I swear. I'll be well, you'll be fine. And everything can go back to normal. Really? I... Of course. Not one drop more. Let's make ourselves comfortable, shall we? It's like a shard of ice into your neck. A quick, sharp pain that fades to throbbing numbness. Your breath catches, your pulse quickens. is finally clear. I feel strong. I feel happy. Shouldn't take long. So many people need killing. Now, if you'll excuse me, you're invigorating, but I need something more filling. This is a gift, you know. I won't forget it. You watch as he stalks towards the forest, stronger, more confident, ready to hunt.
Good morning. How do you feel? It'll pass. Just be glad I'm not a true vampire. A bite from them and you might wake up as a vampire spawn. Like my good self. All of a vampire's hunger, but few of their powers. Oh no. I should be cinders in this light. I hadn't seen the sun for 200 years before we crashed here. Someone, or something, wants me alive. They've changed the rules. Standing in the sun, wading through a river, wandering into homes without an invitation. They're all perfectly mundane activities now. As for my other quirks, well... <laughs> We can figure those out in time. <laughs> you're such a sweetheart. I'm just glad you're being sensible about these... Uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. A vampire? Well, that explains the pallor. Given our group's nature, I don't see much harm. We're each monsters in the making, after all. Yeah. And I'm way too hot to touch. Uh, quite the opposite. I'm here in the spirit of openness and honesty to work together as a team. Maybe we could get him to wear a bell, dissuade any nighttime prowling. There now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. Ah! A friendly face. Oh, you are a sweet, sweet blessing, my dear. You know, I've had nothing but trouble all day. I've been accosted, chased, insulted. Look over there. Do you see that wretched little hive? I mean no offense to the morning lord. I simply prefer when his monasteries aren't overrun with brutish, stupid, rude gith Yankee. They have the audacity to call that hole a creche, as if it weren't actually a murderous training camp. Honestly, I was doing them a favor offering to buy one of their eggs. And how am I repaid? Attacked and run off like some transient. What? No, of course not. I was merely... Well... Uh... Look, it's just an egg. The Society of Brilliance asked me to acquire one of their row so they can incubate it and, once it hatches, raise the spawn in their tradition. The Society believes a Githyanki raised in a peaceful, nurturing environment can overcome its violent nature. Hogwash, of course. A gith Yankee can no more rise above its nature than gnomes can fly. You've been sipping from the same goblet as the society. Perhaps you'd be willing to help them, to prove your point. They may have chased me away, but surely the Giths would welcome a person with such sympathetic views to their crash. And once inside, you could simply purloin an egg. You'll be well compensated, of course. Just bring me an egg. Hold on. It looks different to what I expected. Are you sure that's a gith egg?
What the society doesn't know won't hurt it. And we're left handsomely legacied either way. I rather like this plan. You have yourself an accord. Here's your payment. I'd hope it's enough to warrant your discretion, too. That's enough. On your feet. Where are you taking us? If this is about that weapon your friend was talking about, we don't have it and we don't know shit about it. Silence! Move! No. No, 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 I'm not going in there. I won't. Anyone want to join her? As I thought. Through the doors. Now! The captain is expecting you. So the Githyanki aren't fond of the contests. Could be a good thing. Within the artifact, a feeling stirs. Uncertainty. I can't believe I'm actually venturing into a Gith stronghold again, voluntarily. This had better pay off. True. We're acting out of desperation. Let's just be careful. Any potential cure is useless if our heads are parted from our shoulders beforehand. They must want that artifact back badly if they're dispatching red dragons in pursuit of it. But we cannot afford to lose it. I wish I'd never been sent on this mission. You'll have to live with that curiosity for now, I'm afraid. Let's just concentrate on ridding ourselves of these tadpoles. All will be revealed in due time. I hope. 